Hello viewers, in this video, we are going to build an end-to-end -end data pipeline project using Databricks and Snowflakes. So this is the data architecture of the project. So we are going to um, load data from S3 bucket and then move the data to Databricks. We're going to transform this data in Databricks, then move the transform the data to S3 bucket. And finally, you're going to load it to our data warehouse, which is Snowflake. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the, for the prerequisite of this um, project, you're going to need a laptop and a stable internet connection. You need to have an AWS account a Databricks account and a Snowflake account. So um, first of all, we need to go to our AWS. We need to create a bucket. So um, logging into your AWS and search for S3. You're going to see something like this and you click on bucket. So let's create a bucket for this project. So you click on bucket. The data set you're going to be using from this project is Amazon data set. So I'll call this um, bucket Amazon, Amazon data. You need to make it unique. So I'm going to put my my name and we are using the region us west oregon us west 2. so let's check if this name exists so click create buckets So the name exists, so we've created you. You need to understand that um, your name should be globally unique. As you can see in this icon where it's written global, your S3 bucket needs to be globally unique. So if, if you cannot create the bucket, you need to add either numbers just to make it unique so that you can create this bucket. So, um, since we've created the bucket, we'll click on the bucket. I'm going to create a folder. And this folder, I'm going to call it um, Amazon. So I'll create this folder. Then in this folder, I'm going to upload the, the CSV file we are going to use for this project. So I'll click on upload, click on add file. Then I'll go to my, I'll go to my um, Amazon. The name of the file is air.com underscore airconditioners.csv so I'll click on it then I'll upload the file then I'll click on upload so let me show you the csv file we are going to be working on on my virtual studio so this is the csv file I'm going to upload it on my GitHub so you can um, download it from my GitHub. So this is the CSV file. It has a name, main category, subcategory, image, rating, number of rating, discount, discount price, and actual price. It doesn't have an ID number. So this is the um, CSV file you're going to be using <clears throat> in this project. <clears throat> 
in this project. So, so now that we've created, we need to create an IAM rule that we we'll use to assess um, this. Um, we need to create an IAM rule that we are going to use to assess um, this um, CSV file and then um, mount it to Databricks. So um, let's let's type IAM here. So you click on IAM. So you click on IAM and um, so we now click on user I'll, for this project, I'll create a new user. So click, click on user, I'll cl click add new user. So I'm going to call this one Amazon, Amazon data projects. So we said provide this access to AWS Management Console. Click on this. I'll click on, um, I want to create an AWS user. Click on, I want to create an AWS user. Click on, um, customize a and create your own password for this user. So you click on create password for this user and you click on next. I'm not gonna save it, so I'll say never. Well, let me save it, it's my laptop. So um, then you click on attach direct attach policy you will click on attach policy directly and here you will search for s3 just type s3 full and press enter so you will see amazon s3 full access select it and click on next and click on create user so it's creating our user so this is our so this is our console password and um, username so i uh, will now go to will now go to return to user list So this is the new user we created. Click on it and come to come to security credential here and come through through down and click on create access key because you're going to be using this access key to mount our data breaks so click on access key select select a um, third party service click on next okay click i understand the above recommendation and i want to proceed to create an access key click on next um the describe the tag value uh this one is optional so click on create access key so now you've created the access key and click on download csv file so that it will be on your download on your download um archive so click on it so So I've clicked on it. So let me go and confirm if I have the 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 download CSV file on my 
on my laptop so let me click on my download let me click on download so this is the um amazon data project underscore access key csv file confirm it before because once you click done you cannot um, download it anymore i will need the downloaded version in order to proceed so click on it click done so now let's go to our uh, um, data breaks if you don't know how to create a Databricks um, account, I've created a video on Databricks account. I'll keep the um, link in the description below of this video. So, so now let's um, go to our workspace. So let's, so now we're on our workspace, click on create workspace, click on quick start recommend, recommended. So this workspace name, I'll call it special Amazon project. So you're going to be using Oregon US West same place as our S3 bucket. I'll click, I have data in S3 bucket that I want to query with data blocks. I'll click this one. Then I'll click start, quick start. So now um, it's creating um, a stack on our AWS accounts. Um, that's for this. Note that for this project, you're going to be creating your data bricks on AWS public cloud, like in the video that I will put in the description below on how to set up your data bricks account. So it's it's downloading. So here, so here you it will it will put your Databricks account password. Here you put your Databricks account password. You put your your workspace name and the bucket name. Let's um let's go to our AWS and look for the bucket name and be sure. Of so let, let me click type AWS. Click on S3 bucket. So it's great. So it's um is creating the stack for us, but this is creating a stack for us. So here we are going to screw down, screw down. So you are going to um, type the the bucket. You are going to type the bucket name that we want to attach to this project here before it creates the stack. So let's go to our S three bucket and confirm the bucket name. So our bucket name for this project is Amazon Data Kings Rise. So let me just click it here and copy paste it. And copy it here. We'll cop I'll copy it. Then we'll go to our stack creation and paste it. So now let's you um check here. I acknowledge that AWS Cloud Formation might create an IAM resources with customs names. So and you click create start. Note that this stack is going to take um five to ten minutes to set up, depending on the speed of your internet. For this, I'm going to pause this video and come online again after the stack is complete.
and note that um, once the once the data break workspace stack is complete that you're going to get an email that is telling you that um, your databricks workspace has been set up So guys, I just got an email that your Databricks workspace is ready. So you get an email like this. So now let's go to our Databricks or you can click on the URL. So let me... Let me log into my data bricks. So now you'll get um something like this. So first of all, we need to um we need to create a, a compute. So you come here and you come here and click um compute so you come here and click create compute so for this um um project i'm going to for this cluster name i'm going to change it to um to um Amazon data project cluster. So I'm going to, we are going to be using the runtime. We're going to be using the um, default version. I'm going to reduce my worker, my maximum worker to, um, to four. And I'm going to um, change this terminate after 120 minutes of inactivity. I want to change it to 30 minutes. So, so it, it means that after 30 minutes of inactivity, that my cluster will terminate itself. So I'll click um, create cluster. So this is the summary of the cluster that we'll be creating. So let's um so click on compute here, click on compute here, and let's wait. When the, the cluster we created is complete, it's going to show a green check boss here so now our cluster is ready so now we need to um go to on the on the left side of our so now we need to go to uh, the left side of our user interface so now we'll um, go to our workspace we'll, we'll click on new and we'll click on upload data so when you click on upload data under the data sources click on upload data then click on browse then we'll look for the amazon access key we created initially let me expand this so this is the amazon Amazon access key we created. So you click on Amazon data project, access key.csv, click on open. So let's hold on. It's going to create a table for us for this um, 
access key and secret access key that we upload from the CSV file. So you're going to click, don't worry about the access key ID and secret key ID. I'm going to deactivate it after this project. So click on create table. So it's going to take a um, few minutes for the table to, to, it's going to take few minutes for the table to being created. So let's wait for a um, few minutes. So now our table is created and we can see um, it has created um, the column. It has created a column and a data type of string for the access key ID and secret access key. So now let's create um, a notebook. So click on new, click on notebook. So I'm going to call this notebook um, Amazon Project Notebook. So our default language is going to be Python. So select the cluster we created initially, which is the Amazon Data Project cluster and click on Create. So here now you're going to um you're going to um mount our S3 bucket. We're going to mount our S3 bucket um to data bricks. So I've already written the code on my virtual studio. So um I'll just copy paste it. I'll just copy and paste it and explain the code to you. But for you, I, I will advise you to type everything. Just try your best and type everything instead of copy pasting so that um, you'll be familiar when you make an error, you cross check and see this error. That's how you learn. So let's uh, click on. So you go, I'll go to my click so i'll upload <clears throat> so um this is um the file this is what we use to mount so first of all first of all we'll import We import these two. We import these two libraries. So to run it, you click, if you are using a MacBook, you click shift, shift enter to run it. So it has run successfully. So we now go to our go to uh and copy so you copy this so what 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 this will do is that it will um create um it will create it will help us to so what this code will do is that it will help us to read the data from our HDFS on Databricks. So the data type is going to be Delta because the HDFS we use is have and have on Databricks uses Delta 
five type. So let me show you where we we got um this um HDF. So um to load um the data, you need to go. You need to change this part. You need to change this part to your own part. So let's let me show you where you can get this HDFS part. So now let's go to our our. So let's now let's go to our user interface and click on data. And click on this um, Amazon data C Amazon data project um, access key. Click on it and click on and, and click on and click on detail. Under this detail, you will see the location. So you copy paste this location. You copy this location and um, go to your, and go to your um, recent and go to um, the Amazon project notebook we created and change it and change this one here, change it to yours. Then uh, our CSV file is a command delimiter file and the row header for the data set is, we're going to turn it to true. Um, the delimiter, the delimiter for the CSV file is um, command delimiter file. So we are going to, we are going to now run the cell with um, shift enter. So it's running. So it has run um, successfully. So now let's go to um, the next thing is to. The next thing is to get the, the AWS access key and secret key from the Spark data frame. So you're going to um, click. So you're going to. Um, so the, this is, so this code will help us to get the access key and um, the secret key. Let me copy paste the let me cop let me copy it with the comments so that you understand more what we are doing here. So we are going to get the AWS access key and secret key from the Spark data frame we created here. And our Spark data frame is AWS underscore key underscore DF. So let's run this. So it has run successfully. So So the next one, you're going to encode, encode the secret key. So you're going to encode our secret key, which we don't want to make it public. So you're going to encode it here. So we are going to run this code. So after getting the secret 
secret key and um, secret access key, um, it's time to mount our S3 bucket. So you're going to you're going to mount our S3 bucket with this. So we you will change this to your um S3 bucket name. So let's go back to our um AWS account and check the S3 bucket name. So so for for the bucket, um, this is my S3 for me. This is my S3 bucket name. So click on click on it and then copy paste the bucket name. Copy the bucket name. I mean, then go to go come here and paste it. So we have paste our S3 bucket. So now. We are going to, so the month name for the bucket can be anything. The month name for the bucket can be anything, but I like um, to make it uniform. So I'm going to use my bucket name as my month name too. So now, so now let's run this code. So we've mount our S3 bucket and data bricks. We've mount, so now we've mount our S3 bucket to our data bricks successfully. So now we'll read our CSV file in our S3 bucket using data bricks. So now let's go to So here, yeah, let's mount, we need to mount. So now let's mount the drive and um, run it. So now it's running, it's going to take a few seconds to run. So after mounting the drive, then we can access the data in our, in our um, S3 bucket. So it, it has turned out successful. So if it, turn, if it turns out true, that means it has mounted the drive successfully. So now let's um let's check our, our data. So now then let's copy our mount name. and paste it here. And, um, and our folder name in, we created a folder when we, are, when we are setting up our bucket and the folder I created for my bucket was Amazon. Let's cross check to confirm. So this is our bucket and this is the folder we created. So let's, um, Let's run it now. So it's going to display. So it's going to display every file, every file and folder available in this uh, bucket. But for our project, we only have one file, which is the airconditioner.csv. So,
So now we are going to read our data set from the CSV. From the, we are going to read our data set from the CSV file in S3 bucket. So we need to um, create change our location. So the mounted name, we are going to copy paste it here, which is this, and paste it in, paste it here. So we can get our mount, we can get our file location here. You just copy it from from the display we just displayed here. You can get our file location here. So, so copy it, copy and paste it here. So our, our file type is CSV. The infra schema is true. And the first row, the first row header um, is, is true. We are, we are using delimiter. So now we are creating a data frame that will read the that will read our CSV file in our S3 bucket. So let's run it and at the end we are going to display our CSV file here. So let's run it. So it said parts must be absolute. So we did a mistake here. So you're going to put the hyphen. And let's run it again. So it's running our Spark job. It's going to display our CSV file. So this is the air conditioner CSV file. You can see um, the name of the file the main category, which is appliance, the subcategory air condition. This is the image of the image. This is the link, the rating, the number of rating, the discount price and actual price. So you're going, you going to perform um, a little transformation on this. The transformation we want to perform on this um, data set is that we want to add an ID. An ID, you can see that in the heading, it doesn't have an ID. So we are going to add a unique ID so that we can be able to query it on our data warehouse in Snowflake. But first of all, we need to import a library. So we need to import a mono a monotonically increasing ID um, function for this um, for this ID we want to add. So let's run it first. So now we need to um, we need to read our we need to read our data set. I need to replace it with this one. So now we'll run our data frame. So we'll add a new column. So this code will add, will add a new column with unique ID to our data set. So let's run it.
So we we'll write the updated data set to a new file. So um, this is our file, our file part. So we'll, we'll um, update our file. So we'll create a new file. Let me let me change the name to updated. So now our, our new file name that we are going to write the the transformation we did will be updated airconditioner.csv so let's run it so now let's let's run it so now let's let me display a new a new data frame. So let's run it. So now let's check a new data frame. So this is the name the main category subcategory image link um rating number of rating discount price actual i actual price and this is the the new id we created for our for our data set so this is the new id we created for our data set the final step is to load the data into a Snowflake database. So now let's go to our Snowflake. So in our Snowflake, we are going to create a new worksheet. So let's create a new worksheet, SQL. We are going to select SQL worksheet and we will create the worksheet. Let me give the worksheet name. Let me. Let me rename the worksheet, which is going to be um, Amazon, Amazon Data Breaks Project. So now let's um, create a new database. So I'm going to create database and the database name is going to be let me call it um, Amazon um, database and let's let's run it. So the database have been created successfully. Amazon database successfully created. So. Now I'm going to create a schema too. So let's create a um, schema. This schema, I'm going to call it schema. Although I've already created it to, to prompt an error because I've created a schema called schema already. So for you, it's not going to prompt any error. So let me just run it and you will see that. So let's... So Ma is going to create an error it's saying an ob object scheme already exists, but for you, it's not going to create this error. So let's go. So if you are, if you don't know how to set up a, a Snowflake account, you can check on my video. I've created, I'll keep the description in the link below. I've created a video on how to set up your Snowflake an, account. Let's go back to our Databricks notebook and let's connect our let's connect our Databricks to Snowflake. So let's go.
this is the option so for you to get this url um you need to go to your email go to your email that you use in setting up your snowflake account so for me this is uh, my email so your snowflake trial account is now activated click on the email and copy paste this dedicated login url for me this is my dedicated url url so you copy it and come here and paste it in this cfurl So you copy it. So here you add your username. My username is um my username is Kenzo Rise. And you add your password here. You add your password here. And then the database name that we created on snowflake the database name that we created on snowflake will be added here so let's go to let's go to our snow let's go to our snow um snowflake account this is the name of the database we created on our snowflake account so you're going to connect it so you you copy it and paste it here and this is the schema we created the name is schema so you copy it and paste it here and the warehouse you're going to use you're going to use for this project is the uh compute underscore wh you copy it and paste it here so I'm going to put my password last and run it. We now load the PySpark data frame. So here we we'll read the uh we'll read the CSV format under the header, which is true, and the updated the updated CSV file we transform, which is this part here. You copy it here, you copy it. You copy it and paste it here. Which is the updated air conditioner CSV file. Then we now write it into the format of Snowflake. And the option here is um, these options here are these options that we created here initially. And then you now append it. We now append it into into this database which which is into this database table so and the database table you are going to create is the transform amazon data table so let's run it So let's wait for, so the job has finished running successfully. So now if we go to our, um, if we go to our Snowflake, we'll find out that this table has been created. So let's go to our Snowflake account. Let me copy, let me copy the, snow, the table name. So let's, let's go. Let's, okay, let's, let's run a query. Let's say select. from this table and let's run it and see so run so this is the table that we we um loaded into our this is the transform table we loaded into our um snowflake database so this is it and this is the transform one which has the id we can still let's perform another function let's read it 
let's read the same table on our on our data breaks. So now let's read, we are going to read the table on our data breaks. Let's read it and display it here. So this is the table name. So any query you want to perform, you can perform it here too. So let's, so you see our query, the option is query and we say select, select, select all from transform Amazon table. Select all, select all from, She select all from select all from transform Amazon table. So let's run it. Let's run it and just space enter and let's run it. So it has run and this is the result. So it's going to display the same table it display on our snowflake, which is this. And it has the transform, the ID we, we added when transforming the data. So guys, this is the end of our project. So as you can see, a brief summary of what we did on this project is we we first of all we created an s3 bucket and upload the data in which we create a an im rule to get a secret access key and access key we created the databricks workspace and cluster we processed the data in which we created a new notebook and write the code we transform the data and we load it back to S3 bucket. And finally, we now load the data into Snowflake. So, um, so thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helped you to build your data engineering skill. You can add the project into your portfolio as um, a data engineer or a new data engineer. It takes a lot of effort to, um, to create this video and upload it on YouTube. I want, I want to kindly plead with you to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the video so I can make more subsequent video like this that you can add on your project. You, you can add on your, you can add on your CV. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.